Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here, and yes, we are just back from Hawaii. But that is a whole nother story that I'll tell you at another time. Or maybe later in this video. We'll see what happens. So today we are going to look at and talk about praying mantises. Praying manti, praying mantids. Uh, people call them a lot of things. We know what a praying mantis is. I'm really not sure what the plural of a praying mantis is. Mantises, mantises, mantids, either way. We're looking at them today. And as you can see here in this tank, we also have introduced something else. Well, I like to refer to it as lunch, but in fact, it is a katydid. Depending where you live in the world, you would call this a katydid or a bush cricket or a brush cricket or a long horned grasshopper. I don't think it's a cricket. I don't think it's a grasshopper. It, it's just weird, right? If you've never seen a Katie did before, they, you know, they are kind of weird looking. Yeah. So anyways, for today's video, we'll just refer to it as lunch. So many of you know we have had a problem with black widows in our house really quick. We don't live in a black widow area, but we ended up with a black widow infestation in our house. Long story. But to keep it short and sweet, we think uh, Black Widow egg sac or female spider arrived in a used toy collection I bought online from Southern California, a place where there's a lot of Black Widows. And then shortly thereafter, we started finding Black Widows, and I had never even seen a Black Widow in real life before. So, oh my God, no, they're not false Widows. We have those here. I know what those are. I love it how when I post a picture or a video of a Black Widow... There's always somebody who says, that's not a black widow, it doesn't have an hourglass on its back. The hourglass is on its abdomen, abdomen, on its stomach, and even that you can't go by. People sometimes confuse the black widow with the Australian redback spider. Same family, same kind of spider, slightly different. And for those of you who already know, we were asking, hey, how do we get rid of these things? We tried fumigation, we tried this, we tried that, we tried all kind of weird things, and someone says, hey, what about a praying mantis? Praying mantises will eat black widows. So I went outside and caught a praying mantis, put it in a container with a black widow, and from that famous video from about three, almost four years ago, three and a half years ago, Basically, the Black Widow and the Praying Mantis just danced around each other. That original video is no longer up because I'm on a different channel now, but what is funny is that video has been stolen dozens of times, probably more, has been re-uploaded on dozens of channels without my permission, even with my watermark on it and my voice. So, yeah, what do you do, you know? But I guess the point I t of the story is, the reason I told you that is not to say, hey, somebody stole my video, it's, hey, it's still up there. <laughs> really, the point is, people said, hey, try a praying mantis, and we did a test run, and it didn't work, but we have not given up on using praying mantis to kill black widows. In fact, uh, in the months after that one famous video of mine was filmed, we started raising praying mantises. Yes, praying mantises live in our area, but it just became easy to raise your own. You can order them online, you can order the eggs online. You can either start with baby mantises, referred to as nymphs. You can get those online, or like I said, the egg sacs, or you could find an egg sac outside. Or, well, how we originally started was, we had a mantis, and it laid its own eggs. In addition to running off the mantises from my original egg sac that the mantis uh, hatched or, or laid, because they've been hatching, you know, generation after generation, they keep breeding and giving us more eggs, kind of like chickens, right? I have also purchased a few egg cases online at Amazon, and then two different times I have purchased a total of five, so three one time and two another time, total of five Chinese mantises. Now, if you've never had a praying mantis as a pet, let me just tell you, they are pretty cool pets. The domestic ones here in the United States, they're kind of neat, but the Chinese mantises, which you can buy here in the U.S., no problem, are considerably bigger, and that's really cool. When it comes to keeping praying mantises as pets, if you start with a small baby, a little nymph, you know, their care is a little different than an adult mantis. The babies will eat teeny tiny little fruit flies and things such as that which you can also purchase online at Amazon and a whole bunch of other places. We would get our little uh, fruit flies and fruit fly larvae. We would get them from Josh's Frogs online. There'll be a link down in the description section. Of course, there's a lot of other places you can go to get the fruit flies. I believe Petco, it's where the pets go. They used to have, you get the fruit flies there and things such as that. Now, as the nymphs, baby mantises get bigger, 
then they can be fed small crickets, pinhead crickets, tiny crickets, and then eventually they will eat full-size crickets or various bugs, like this Katie did, that you can catch outside in your yard. Now this you, some of you might find this really funny. Now I have met several people, including adults, who are terrified of praying mantises. Well, yes, they look like aliens and, you know, well, look at the mantis on Space Ghost. So yeah, I, I could see how that could scare you. Space Ghost plug, right? But a praying mantis is very docile and very harmless to people. I don't even know if they can see us. You put your hand down and the mantis will walk on your hand. He's not going to attack or bite your hand. I guess unless you're poking him in the face. And really, I don't think a mantis will even bite a person. They might, you know, try to pinch you as they grab you with them giant weird scissory forearm things, which are kind of cool when you watch them catch something. But over the last several years, I have probably easily had a thousand, you know, several hundred mantises come through my my home, through my system, through my breeding, however you want to put it. We've had to come in contact with hundreds of them, if not thousands. And never once have myself or anybody with me been pinched or bit or something. They're just and Chinese mantises, they're, you know, for their big size, they're also known for being docile. Now this doesn't mean there's not some kind of mantis where you live that's not just this horrible, terrible thing that'll, you know, kill you and eat you in the night. I don't know. I'm only speaking from my experience. And if you've ever seen a mantis eat another bug, they just mm, grab it in its, you know, forearm, claw-like forearm, and then just eat that thing alive. <laughs> Mantises, yeah, they have, yeah, they have no mercy. But that's nature. There is no mercy in nature. And it's even worse so in the bug world, in the insect world, or in a bug's life. It's just even worse there because they don't even have brains. They just are like little robot animatrons or, you know, they, they yeah, anyways. So they don't think, they don't plan, they're not conspiring against you, like I think the Black Widows are, conspiring against me. Anyway, so yeah, praying mantises make great pets. Also, another generality, you don't want to keep too many mantises in one container because they will just eat each other. It's like the Highlander movies, remember? There can be only one! And that's how it is with mantises. Another thing we've been told, uh, old wives' tale or not, and there's a reason, because there is such thing as old wives, right? Praying mantises, after they mate, the female eats the male. Well, that doesn't always happen. There, there's a couple reasons why, how, it doesn't, how it doesn't happen. You know, we also heard that about black widows, too, and that doesn't happen every time with black widows. But with the mantis, the males are generally smaller. So after mating, the female allows the mating to happen, and then after the mating, if the male doesn't walk away, he's there, the female looks at it and says, hey, you look like something good to eat, and then eats them. Just like that video that I posted a few weeks ago of the female mantis eating another female mantis. In this video here, you will see I have quite a few mantises in one container, and they are mostly content enough just to do their thing. Just like if you had pet fish, or piranhas, or alligators, or anything else, if you give them enough food, then they will just do their thing and eat the food. Now when it comes to the babies, the little nymphs, the problem is if you have a hundred or two hundred hatching, you know, hatchlings, hatchlings, nymphs, babies, and depending on the mantis species, there can be in one egg case can be as many as ten eggs or four hundred eggs. I guess the average for the domestic mantis is about one to two hundred. Those little monsters will just keep eating each other. So when they start hatching, bam, you got to separate them out. You got to keep them separate. You got to get them in their own little containers because they will eat until, like in Highlander, there can be only one. There can be only one. That's how it is in the mantis world. So if you have an egg casing and you're waiting for it to hatch, it could hatch in the middle of the night. It could hatch when you're gone. But if you see it hatching, start getting a bunch of little containers and separate out them baby mantids. If you remember, I posted that video a year or so ago, and I don't know if it's still up on this channel, but I'll make sure it's up if not. I had a hatching, and they all escaped out of the cracks of the tank. They were all over my kitchen. It was this, oh, baby mantis is everywhere. And, of course, you've probably seen my videos with the egg casings, what they look like with the mantis egg casing, as well as the videos I have with the praying mantises actually laying the egg casings. Sometimes, if the mantis has mated, then it is a viable egg case, but it's possible for a mantis to lay an egg case unfertilized and it's just doing it out of, you know, nature. It just has this urge to lay an egg case. 
Nothing's gonna hatch out of that unfertilized egg case, unless it's one of them kind of mantises that doesn't need a male to mate, and I guess there are a few out there, but they're not common to most of us, so we don't even need to talk about that. So if you've only had one mantis and it's been kept separate by itself the whole time and no way it could have mated, if it lays an egg case, those eggs are 99.99999% sure they're not going to hatch babies, but I wouldn't throw it away just in case, right? When a mantis lays an egg case, those eggs can hatch in as little as three to four weeks on smaller mantises, and in the larger breeds, it could be four to six weeks. But you say, oh man, four to six weeks, three to six. so I like to say, you know, three to six weeks. But then, like every other rule that's meant to be broken, they can also overwinter. The egg cases can go dormant and then not even hatch till spring. So what is that? Three, I've had egg cases hatch five months later. I was starting to consider throwing them away because they were bad. And I said, I just keep them in a container. And then suddenly there was mantis, mantises, baby mantids everywhere. So yeah. Out in the wild, it's common for in the late summer, you'll see a bunch of mantises. If you're in mantis country, you'll start seeing a bunch of them. That's when they're looking to be breeding time, so they're out and about. They've been there all summer, but you're just seeing them because they're out looking to get lucky. Then they mate, and over the next several weeks or a month, they will lay their egg casings, and then they will guard that egg casing for a while until they die, and then those egg cases will overwinter, and then sometime in spring when things warm up, kind of like a seed, right? When things warm up, they will hatch. And really quick here, if you're going to have a pet mantis, the larger the better. Now there's some really cool looking mantises out there. We've seen them on videos, and I've seen them on the websites for uh, insect sellers. But the smaller mantises, mantids, the ones like I said could be just three to four weeks for them to, for the babies to hatch, they also have a shorter lifespan. They might only live from four to eight weeks, you know, and he's four to eight weeks, that's, you know, one to two months, right? But the larger mantises, they can live for four to six months. And you might think, well, that's not long, but, you know, that's not bad for a bug, right? Except some breeds of female tarantulas can live like 20 years. You know, a spider living 20 years. Ugh. I had one Chinese mantis that lived between eight and nine months. They're a larger size, so you'd have to put them towards the higher end of the four to six months. So even if a Chinese mantis typically only lives about six months or so, this one lived almost nine months, but, you know, he's living the life of Riley. Living in a heated container, all the food it wants. Didn't have to go out and, you know, fight for a living. Had no job, just, you know, kind of retired. So I would say there is a, a way to maybe have them live a little longer, you know, take really good care of them. And yes, you are correct. Female mantises, just like female black widows, are larger than the males. Yeah, it's just, hey, is that how it is in real life? Wait, never mind. I didn't say that. Don't get mad at Just, honey, just go back to what you're doing. Okay, I did say that. All right, so I, I guess I've gone on for quite a while here. Probably not as long as I could go on. Anyways, I hope this has answered some praying mantis questions you've had. And I hope this might encourage some of you to maybe consider getting a praying mantis for a pet. If you do get a mantis for a pet, you don't have to keep it in a boring little container. I mean, you could. A praying mantis, what's it need? It needs moisture so it can molt, and it needs food, and it needs a stick to hang on. Or, as you'll see here, mantises just like to hang upside down on the cage top. No matter what really cool things you put in there, sticks from the hang on, most of the time they'll just want to hang upside down. But if you make a really cool small terrarium for him, you know, you put some bugs in there, and he'd be happy as a clam. Assuming clams were happy, right? Okay, really quick, my Hawaii story. We just got back from Hawaii. We've been there for more than a week. We just returned, and then I lost a bunch of video footage. I don't know what happened, so I have to go back. So in less than a month, I am going back by myself, running bachelor, cruising, going back by myself, because i got to film some sharks. And then I just uh, scheduled the shark cage and then some other swimming thing, and uh, there's a, a bunch of things i got to get done. Going by myself, which I hate, because, you know, you know I fly first class, not because I'm fancy, it's because I hate to fly, and I just need, you know, I want a little roomier seat, I don't want to be cramped, I just, I hate to fly, right? As a Marine Corps, I got bounced around on too many helicopters and planes, I hate to fly, so I fly first class. If I can't afford to, I don't fly. But the thing is, I hate having to sit next to, next to somebody I don't know, because either they want to talk the whole time, or... 
They want to ignore you the whole time. And then up in first class, some of the people I've sat next to, I've, had, I've sat right next to some really nice men and women, and then I've sat next to some snobs up there who just, yeah, oh, it's horrible. I just want to just get on the plane and just ha snap my fingers like that and magically have it be in Hawaii. I mean, it's a five and a half hour to six hour flight from where I live. Not horrible, but still, it's a long time. And then from where I live, I got to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get to the airport in time, get there a couple hours early to get on the plane. Oh, just, you know, it's horrible. I, I mean, I hate flying. And it's even worse when I don't know the person I'm sitting next to. Yeah, anyways. And before you say, quit whining, just pay for the seat next to you and it'll stay empty. No, that's not how it works anymore. You pay for the seat next to you, the airline will take it away from you, and they will put somebody else in it for a higher price. That's how it works. I've had it happen. Tried it. Just, that's not an option. So anyways, I got to get a whole bunch of that uh, Hawaii stuff together, and then I got to go film a bunch of stuff, so it, oh, just, and then I need to make you that update video for our Yellow Jacket tank, you know, we're on week five, I think, and I'll get that as soon as possible. So, have you ever had a pet praying mantis? Have you ever thought about getting a pet, pet, uh, have you ever, uh, yeah. so, have you ever had a pet praying mantis? Have you ever thought about having a pet praying mantis? They're easy, like I said, you can buy the eggs online or buy the mantis online, they'll uh, arrive alive mostly no really they, they do get your house alive but i've had one die within two days of arriving at my house but it made it they're alive right so it, they are really easy so even in the winter time you can have pet mantises you don't have to wait for summer really cool pets you just got to go go down the pet store you get them some little crickets to eat and bam so you don't even have to go out and catch bugs in your yard if you don't want to and you will get used to hearing the chirping of crickets throughout your house even in the winter time so it's just like it's summer really nice it's fabulous! So, leave your comments in the comment section. Hey, tell me what you think of this video. Tell me how stupid I am for losing all that video footage for what I filmed in Hawaii. Yeah, oh, I just need to move there, right? Oh. Alright, so I'll leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Beanmeister22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.